greetings from Castle Goring, from Mickey, Aurora, and from me. Well, today I am going to plunge right in without any questions. I am going to first of all thank the very nice lady who sent me those flowers, which as you can see are really beautiful. She came to the tea party and I thought that was so kind of her. And I have also a real debt of gratitude to the person who sent in the pre-publication articles from Byline Times. Thank you very much. They have given me, uh, so you have given me actually, the opportunity to investigate fully and to speak to people in a position to know what really is going on. And I'm going to blow the whistle on the whole sordid, nasty, filthy, tacky thing. So without further ado, shall I plunge right in? Okay, if Aurora will allow me to do so. Yes, Aurora, yes. Okay, I've made extensive notes, so I'm afraid you're going to have to bear with me while I refer to my notes. I do not believe normally in conspiracies. And... However, when you are presented with a trail of slime from a load of slugs, conspiracy or none, just follow the trail of slime. Whence it started, whence it is going to have its destination, By Line Times is a very, in my opinion, distasteful and disgraceful organ. It was set up and is run by someone called Dan Evans, a convicted criminal. It is in bed with David Sherborne. Harry's lawyer, the one who convinced Harry when Elton John orchestrated the meeting that Harry should spearhead a campaign in Britain to punish the press for not worshipping at his and Meghan's altar. Elton John hacked off up to their head in all of this. That is Hugh Grant and, of course, Harry and Meghan. Now, the purpose of these recent articles, which I will get to in a moment, three of them, uh, which by the time this is broadcast, presumably they will all have seen the light of day. I don't know when they are all going to be uploaded, I know one has already been uploaded. Uh, I'm not sure about the other two. And it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to have my timings dictated by anybody else. I know what I have in front of me, so to speak. And I'm going to be addressing that. You know... There are three articles, all of which are rubbish, very plausibly presented rubbish, as more than one person to two whom I have spoken has said, and they agree with me that David Sherborne's fingerprints are over this in every way, shape and form. The wild inconsistencies 
are very representative of what he his case cases i should say where harry has been concerned or concerned totally wild inconsistencies just throwing everything you know throwing all the mud and all the spaghetti and everything and just hoping some of it will stick with absolutely no consistency but the short term is to bring down Dan Wooten and I have to tell you going off these three articles guys give it up I mean why continue to announce to the world that you're gonna be failing because you don't have any substance whatsoever and you're just a regurgitating vomit but the longer term aim which to me is really much more ominous is the destruction of William Prince William's reputation I will get to that in a short while and on the back of that the enhancement of Harry and Meghan's reputation notwithstanding the fact that practically everything that's printed in these articles is so open to contradiction and <laughs> you shine the light on it and you see the slugs everywhere anyway how are they proposing or how how let me rephrase that my information is that having tried to plant roses in William's garden they're now trying to plant pansies yeah oh all those flowers that the flower of shall we say the worldly and global establishment has come up with because my understanding is that the very first stories concerning William and uh, the Rose Garden emanated from shall we say a weed not a flower a weed and I don't think I'm going to mention any names what I will say is that this weed was overheard at Soho House in Holland broadcasting this version of events far and wide then just coincidentally Charles Corrin, <coughs> sorry, was there and he managed to hear this, at the time, supposed story, which they've now changed it. It's now changed. It's no longer the Rose Garden. They no, no, it's not good in since since the roses haven't bloomed. The weed has been planting stories that one that the participant is actually not interested in roses, but prefers gardens with pansies. I'm sure you get my drift. There is a timeline from these canals at Soho House in Holland and now we pick up the timeline with Megsy Baby and H. I think I can say that openly at this point. Megsy Baby and H. 
Meghan and Harry have announced that they are pregnant. Actually, very good description, I would have thought. Very cannily accurate description. They are pregnant. So that's now 2019. So Soho House has taken place in 2019. Megan is witnessed knocking back the booze at a time that following the announcement of her magnancy that she was magnet. And I don't think that you're supposed to be drinking alcohol while you're magnet, but I suppose this rules don't apply to Megsy baby. She was witnessed knocking back the booze. The announcement is made. They go to Australia and New Zealand and Fiji, and they have a wildly ostensibly successful tour. Behind the scenes, there are huge problems. Don't take my word for it. Ask the Governor General and his wife. Anyway, there are problems behind the scenes and Megsy Baby is being encouraged by her best friend, Jessica Mulroney, or is it Rooney? I think they pronounce it Rooney in Canada. Jessica Mulroney. And she and her husband and Harry and Megsy Baby are having the time of their lives. And Megsy Baby says she doesn't understand how, how she's not being paid for this, notwithstanding the fact she's being paid. But anyway, there we go. And... Uh, the press make much of the outstanding success that the tour is. Mm. Goes straight to Harry and Meghan's heads, as we are going to see in a short while in terms of the Byline Times article. And to those of you who've read Spare Me, also in the book Spare Me the Nonsense, Oh, there's great allusion to how jealous everybody in the royal family was because Megsy Baby did the job better than any of them. And they were going to try to keep Megsy Baby an edge down because they are such stars, such stars. And there had never been such stars in the royal constellation before. So let's follow the timeline. So that's now autumn 2019. Megsy and H come back and there are allegations of bullying the staff and Megsy baby also shows up and surprises everybody including the organizers and Rosamond Pike and hands an award to her dress wedding dress designer totally unscripted but Megs is spontaneous. I'm a hugger. I just love hugging everybody. And I also love hugging every scene. <laughs> yes, I do, I do, I do. So that's now December. And Megs, baby, if you recall, has gone from drinking alcohol in the early days of her pregnancy to exploding in December, notwithstanding the fact the baby isn't born until May. So that's six months. So she's maximum three months gone. However, she looks about seven or eight months gone as she's clutching that huge belly at the Royal Albert Hall. And being such a star is so wonderful. <laughs> but in the background, there are huge problems because Meghan and Harry's behavior is so intolerable. And William has taken the side of the staff. So, and Simon Case is on the case. You need to remember all of these names because of what is about to come. 
So that is December, January. Harry and Meghan were such stars. I mean, the whole world's just waiting for me to shine brightly. Oh, yes, 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 Meg, yes, Meg. Nobody's ever shone as brightly as you. Oh, is it shone or is it shined? Or is it shine? Or is it mine? Or is it wine? Or is it swine? I don't know. I, I was never any good at English, notwithstanding that. I'm English and my grandmother was, was the queen at the time. And I, I'm supposed to speak the queen's English, but... Uh, me and Meg's yarn so show how we should speak English because I'm so intelligent. So, that's January when she's shining brightly and Archie takes a dive between her knees in front of the assembled press with all the photographs to show what happened on that day, the 14th of January. Fast forward, the 16th of January, Meg's a baby, claiming later that she is curled up in a ball, she's so distressed, is at Mayhew, getting down on her haunches in very high heels with her legs tightly closed together, and up she comes, and Archie has a flatus, <laughs> the first fetus to be heard having a flatus in front of everybody. Maybe he actually had to break wind because when Megsy Baby was down on her haunches, Archie was somehow scrunched up in her spine because he disappeared. So let's be clear about what's going on behind the scenes. Huge bullying allegations and now the possibility of being questioned about the extraordinary way that her pregnancy is going and the extraordinary ability of her fetus to flate us and dive. So, that's January. Well, of course, Meghan and Harry, if they had any sense or even no sense at that stage, would have been concerned that questions would be asked at the very least. And remember, there were huge questions being asked about their conduct in terms of bullying the staff. Well, come March, I think it was the 13th of March, Dan Wooten runs a story. And at that stage, Dan Wooten, according to Byline Times, and although they managed to get an awful lot turned on its head, this is one fact that I suspect can be relied upon of the many that can't, because Dan Wooten at the time is supposed to really like Meghan and Harry, and he doesn't take to William. And Dan Wooten runs a story in the sun that can be traced right back to the planting of the rose bush at Soho House in, I think it was the September, in Holland, about how Prince William likes rose bushes. Well, it's very quickly taken down when it turns out that the story is inaccurate. In fact, it is 
removed from the website even on the sun but everybody else has become aware of it and other publications have picked it up that's march now let's start with what actually is the content of byline times rubbish because they are trying to create a story where there is no story and they are trying to not only destroy Dan Wooten's career but destroy William as well and if they can damage Charles as well they're happy to do so because Charles and William are right there in the firing line from the word go. But my understanding is they're not really, I mean, if Charles is collateral damage, whoopee! But the one they really want to bring down is William. And so here we go. Oh, I should make a few other points while I, I'm on, on this. Uh, before I actually get into the nitty gritty of the story. In March, when this exploded, notwithstanding the fact that the sun quickly took down the story, all Megan's friends hopped in enthusiastically, spreading it far and wide. Lainey Liu, who is a friend of Megan's from Canada, plastered it everywhere. I mean, Scabies plastered it everywhere. Lainey Liu is also a friend of Jessica and Brad Mulrooney, and I think it's how they pronounce the name, and Marcus Anderson. Oh my goodness, I'm beginning to see Megan's paw prints everywhere. Maybe we should embrace this flying pig because of the three stories, one of them actually is by, it's taken, is a reduced and obviously therefore with the permission of the writer, uh, an, a, an a Labour MP called Chris Bryant who gave a lecture to hacked off about the dastardliness of how Meghan and Harry had been treated so unfairly. This mark you at a time that the press in Britain is suppressing all of the bullying allegations and staring well clear about Archie's prenatal gifts of diving and and having flatuses so they are condemning the british press at the very moment the british press is being restrained and chris bryant gives in his article not only co condemns the fact that Maxi Baby and H were treated so badly. This is a third of the articles that I was sent incidentally. But he also uses Bot Sentinel as an authority on the fact that Meghan and Harry were being trolled or botted or whatever the term is, notwithstanding the fact that when an investigation was done, 
if I recall correctly, it was by Netflix, but I don't remember who it was by, but one of the companies did it. It turned out there was no trolling, that there were, that, 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 Every, uh, every allegation, that's right, every allegation that Bart Sentinel made on the Harry and Meghan Netflix broadcast turned out to be a fabrication. It also turned out that the head of Bart Sentinel has no expertise whatsoever in the field. Uh, his previous line of occupation was running an escort agency. Well, I think there we know that water has sought its own level. But how does that apply to Bot Sentinel being used by Chris Bryant as an authority on how Meghan and Harry were trolled when it turns out Meghan and Harry have done more trolling than been trolled against and they were the ones who were employing people to boost their profile which of course made sound sense commercially because they were once they were being they were in the public arena so to speak and wanted to make money they had to make money by flogging themselves and their wares and the way to do it was to create the impression that they were more popular and more in demand than they were. That's why they had people botting them. But anyway, Chris Bryant, this MP, he's never apologized to Nigel Farage for having lied and said that Nigel Farage had Russian connections. He is one of the people who helped to cause all that trouble for Nigel Farage and Nat West Bank. And of course, try to destroy Nigel Farage with a totally false accusation. Has he ever withdrawn it? Not that I'm aware of. But he's willing to allow his totally spurious and unsustainable phantasmagorical narrative about Harry and Meghan being abused by the British press at a time they weren't being abused by the British press at all. On the contrary, the British press were covering up for them. He and he's used, he is used as a source. And the main thing about this source of this is that it is taken from a lecture he gave to Hacked Off. Hacked Off is Elton John and Hugh Grant's organization to shut up the press. They also made wildly inconsistent uh, and so uh, let me take the first one because the, the first story is, it's headed, the truth about Mexit, how Dan Wooten and a cash for leaks scandal split the royal family as scotland yard probes the journalist dan wooten over allegations of blackmail and serial sexual catfishing after a three-year special investigation by byline times remember byline times is an organization that is headed up by a convicted criminal let's just remember that my goodness we should really put our trust in ex-cons. The newspaper can now reveal how his payments to the partner of a top royal aide forced the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to run from the UK. <laughs> the Duke and Duchess of Sussex didn't run from the UK. 
over anything to do with Dan Wooten. They ran from the UK because Meghan wanted to make money. I was told that that's how I came to write my book, Meghan and Harry, The Real Story. She wanted to make money and she wanted to be involved politically and he was happy to go along with it. So right there, that's a lie. It's written by Dan Evans, former jailbird, and somebody called Tom Latcham, whoever he is. It says that the royal family, they claim that the royal family, I, I can't read everything because aside from anything else, it would be a breach of copyright. But they make claims that the royal family were doing deals and trading with the press, regurgitating Harry's statements in the, the, in the book Spare Me, which I am told David Sherborne has encouraged Harry and shown Harry the way and shone the light for Harry. And they have accused P Prince William's press secretary, Christopher Jones, of irregularities because his partner, Steve, Callum Stevens, is a PR and he used to work with the Sun. Now, I have spoken to somebody in the Murdoch organization at the very highest level today and got confirmation of the fact that there was a full and thorough investigation at the time of the allegations of impropriety. There, were, there was no impropriety whatsoever. Yes, Callum Stevens is a PR. PRs do deal with the press. That's what they are paid to do by their clients and sometimes by the press. This is perfectly normal everyday conduct that Harry in his book, The Spare, or, or, or let's call it Spare Me the Crap, because that's what it is. He is trying to make out that a perfectly regular system that has been in place to the mutual benefit, not only of the royal family and the media, but of our country, because we need a free press. We need a viable press. We need a prosperous press. And therefore, they need to make their money somehow. These, these dotes don't seem to get that point. They maintain that Harry's and Meghan's Mexit was damaged by Christopher Jones partner behaving improperly with Dan Wooten. Now, there's been an investigation, a thorough investigation by this, about this, and it has been shown that there was no impropriety whatsoever, but they're regurgitating it. Why are they regurgitating this? They being the former jailbird Dan Evans and his cohorts, because these, these people, this is an operation, let me tell you, orchestrated from the word go by David Sherborne, Elton John, Hugh Grant. They managed to suck in that dolt Harry and that hustler Meghan, who, as we all know, do not approve of free speech, so that they can shut down free speech. And in the process, 
they're going to tarnish Prince William more than they've already tarnished him. Because they bring up back all this rubbish about the roses that were planted in his garden. They then accuse Prince, the, sorry, King Charles, as he now is, but in those days he was still Prince Charles, of cutting off Harry and Meghan's financing to the tune of £700,000. When Harry named Christian Jones in a frivolous lawsuit, which presumably was orchestrated, if not by David Sherborne, by that other hotshot lawyer. I'm Rachel Zane. I know all about the law. I mean, these people are so reprehensible. It is beyond belief how they abuse the system to try to, ab to ab and, and abuse people innocent people, so that they can further their agenda, which is to censor us and censor the newspapers and censor the media. They then, they make some really ridiculous points. They, they maintain that our oh, that basically the palace was so concerned because Harry issued proceedings using Christian Jones's name. And the palace was so concerned because the palace didn't want Christian Jones's name being mentioned as it ought not to have been mentioned. I mean, this, again, I am told, has a very slick operator's hands all over it. Somebody with sufficient legal experience to know just where to grub things up. And of course, the king, as he now is, and Prince William said, absolutely not, you can't. But he did. So they're now blaming Dan Wooten because Harry broke ranks and named an innocent person so that they, the they being his team, could portray him as an innocent victim and create trouble for William, who, remember, was backing up his staff. Let's remember what was really going on at this time. Harry and Meghan they were being investigated for abusing their staff, for bullying their staff. And they have now decamped to Canada. And they are, this article is trying to blame Harry and Meghan's decamping to the United States on the fact that poor innocent Harry, oh, uh, the fact he had to name Christian Jones because all sorts of information that that uh, nobody knew about except him and the king got leaked to Dan Wooten. <laughs> I mean, how does that work? Harry and Meghan are well known to never be able to keep their goddamn traps shut. I mean, how do they think people find out stuff about them? because they suffer from distant terminal congenital diarrhea, verbally. God, I mean, you couldn't make any of this up. It is such an outrage. You're dealing with really do-lally people who flip everything on its head. They're innocent of everything. Everybody else is guilty of everything, except, of course, when you examine what's really going on and what's being said, they are guilty of sin and everybody else is innocent. Then they come up with another lie, which is that the royal family was so jealous 
of and wait for it. I'm going to quote this. They threatened the removal of the funding to try and protect the royal household from a potential courtroom scandal with Jones and Wooten very publicly at the centre. The actual removal of the funding weeks later was about control and designed to force Harry and Meghan to come back to the senior royal family in the UK where their security would be assured. And wait for the coup de grace. The greater truth is that Harry and Meghan make better headlines than the King and Camilla or William and Kate. Well, they make negative headlines. But whose visit to America covered him in glory just because he was being a regular guy? Prince William. Catherine and Prince William, wherever they go, they are praised. Harry and Meghan, I don't see anybody praising them anywhere in the world, I've got to tell you except the few organs that they still manage to control. Nobody else does, and nobody cares about them, except as awful lessons of what not to be. And as for the idea that the royal family wanted to starve them into submission, no, they wanted to make it clear to Harry that you can't tell lies about a, pre a press secretary just because it suits your paranoid interpretations. That's what was going on. And I'll tell you better still. Harry wrote that letter before action gratis his lawyer. We won't ask who the lawyer was <laughs> or how they all came to get that advice. No, not at all. I hope I hope I don't have a head cold coming on. Oh, gosh. Pigs are flying. Pigs are flying. Yes. Harry. I mean, can you make any of this up? Harry was cut off because he was a treacherous little sod who was trying to destroy the career of a perfectly reputable and decent press secretary. That's why he was cut off. He wasn't being rewarded for being a jerk, the jerk that he is. The royal family wasn't trying to get them back. I have it on a very good authority that the Queen was actually hoping that if they made a success of it, that this would lead the way for other junior royals to be able to branch out because the royal family was being reduced in members of it who would be functioning publicly. So right there, we also have, if when you place things in their proper context, the reality contradicts these stupid claims. Then we have them claiming that the British press was I, I read, it's no surprise they have endured such a degrading time from such a willing British media when the same just isn't true elsewhere in the world. That's what the article is claiming. So the only place that Harry and Meghan ever get bad press is the British media. <laughs> oh dear. Aurora, Mickey, can you tell me, is Family Guy a British program? What about South Park? Is that a British program? Oh, yeah, of course they're British. Everything is British. Well, the, 
fact of the matter is Harry and Meghan are getting a bad press because they are jerks and they keep on showing themselves to be jerks. She has attacked her father. She has... Remember, she is the one who in Fiji lied and said that she had got grants and put herself through school by waitressing and, I suppose, whatever else we won't go into. <laughs> she didn't mention any of that. No, 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 because that, of course, Daddy was supporting her, but she needed to make her way in the world. Mm. But she's not going to mention anything about any of the charms that she has utilized throughout the years. Well, Daddy and Trevor and whoever else was paying the bills. Now, H, H, this one, this one pays the bills, this one. That one used to, now this one does. Well, the mere fact that Harry and Meghan have a rotten press, and at the time that the articles were published in 2019, they did not have a rotten press in Britain. But Meghan created the rotten press. Remember, Meghan is the one who got her five friends. She wrote the letter to her father, the letter to daddy. I've just written a letter to daddy. And when daddy didn't leak the letter, she got her five friends to leak it to people, one of whom was connected to people. Let's remember what happened there. This is all happening at the same time, incidentally, that that this period is being covered by Byline Times, who Harry and Meghan are so innocent and everybody loves them and everybody thinks they're wonderful. And, are, and that the British media are giving them such a hard time. The British media weren't giving them a hard time. And they, however, were orchestrating because following on from people after they decamped came Oprah. I do not recall the British media accusing Harry and Meghan of being racist. But although they can accuse them of being racist, I certainly would accuse them of being racist because anybody who plays the race card with the alacrity and the gall and the irresponsibility that they have played the race card, I, as a Jamaican, say I think it's an absolute disgrace that anybody can play the race card the way they have played it. The British press didn't accuse them of racism. They accused the royal family and the British press of racism. They, this, this article is trying to create a... Uh, a scenario whereby the perfectly innocent actions of Callum Stevens and Dan Wooten will be misrepresented defamatorily to suggest something untoward, notwithstanding the fact that they all know that this matter has already been investigated and they have all been exonerated. Byline Times has spoken to several sources with connections to the royal households. <laughs> Harry and Meghan! About how the partner of Christian Jones, a publicist, came to be paid £4,000 by Rupert Murdoch's the son in August 2019, allegedly for articles relating to the Sussexes. No, it's not allegedly for articles relating to the Sussexes. You know it had nothing to do with articles related to, to the Sussexes. You, are, you, Dan Evans, need to go back to prison if you think that you can get away with saying things like this. Because you know as well as I do that there was a full and thorough investigation and neither Callum Stevens nor Dan Wooten was seen to have done anything unlawful. And you also know 
because you yourselves claim that you can't reveal your sources who are anonymous because it would be journalistically wrong to do it. But you are trying to exert pressure on Newsgroup, The Sun, Dan Wooten, and Stephen, uh, Callum Stevens to reveal their sources or what, what, what legal transactions. Who the hell are you? Who are you? Your wild inconsistency, your hypocrisy is beyond belief. Who the hell do you think you are? That you can make accusations and say you've got it from confidential sources which you can't reveal because they're anonymous, but perfectly reputable people are supposed to not only reveal their sources, but they are also to reveal the content of their privileged conversations. Oh, I don't think you, Dan Evans, have the intelligence to have come up with this. This is very reminiscent to me of the case that David Sherborne crafted the farce to which we, the public, and the courts were subjected recently. Gratis David Sherborne and the dolt who he has managed to use as his stalking horse. I want to wrap this up by making one or two points because I could go on for the next three hours because I have such extensive notes on this and I have examined the matter so thoroughly that I could go on and on, but I don't think you want me to go on and on. Christian Jones was named. The earth didn't fall in. His career wasn't ruined. Everybody understood that there is nothing wrong with people having partners who are in similar fields. It's called Chinese walls. There was a famous case in the United States of America when Trump was president, where the wife worked for Trump and the husband was a Democrat. I can't remember their names, uh, but they were a very famous case and there was never any question of any irregularity. There has been no question of any irregularity with Guy Black and Mark Boland. Mark Boland was Prince Charles's private secretary at a time, or press secretary, I can't remember which one it was, that, that uh, he, I think he was press secretary, uh, that, that and at the time, the guy Black, his partner, was the head of the Press Complaints Commission. There is a no suggestion by anybody except this muck-raking load of filthy scum. That's what I said. In my opinion, they are muck-raking filthy scum. And they are trying to fabricate, they are trying to, to destroy people's careers so that they can further their agendas. Well, there was no impropriety done by Callum Stevens and Dan Wooten or by Christopher Jones. And now trying to make out that this was such a huge big deal and this is what caused Harry and Meghan. Yeah, it gave to, to stay, to leave Canada and go to the United States of America. Excuse me, my book had been, had, before this happened, in my book I was being told by Harry and Meghan's people that Harry and Meghan intended to end up in LA. <laughs> so, how does that one work? How does that measure up with this rubbish? Because my book has stood the test of time. This story doesn't even stand 
the merest scrutiny of fact. I think on that note, I will say enough said if this story develops into something bigger, I will revisit it. But I don't think I should give it any more of my attention, nor should you give it any more of yours. By line times is a rag. It's not fit to be used for lavatory paper. Your posterior is too good for byline times. They are disgusting in my view. Not one word of what they say has the degree of proportionality that would merit respect. This is just a sleazy, unsavory attempt to, first of all, excuse Meghan and Harry for their bad behavior, to deny that they have behaved badly by giving them justification for behaving badly. Well, I'm sorry, even when you're justified, bad behavior is still bad behavior. This is also an attempt to boost Meghan and Harry and to deny the undeniable. Meghan and Harry are not as popular as William and Catherine. Sorry, you can say till you're blue in the face. Everybody's jealous of Meghan and Harry because they're so fabulous. Nobody's jealous of Meghan and Harry. Nobody would want to be Meghan and Harry unless they were as intellectually challenged as these people are at byline times. I mean, you talk about sculpt, they are sculpting out of feces and hoping that we will think it's clay. Well, it's not, it stinks to high heaven. And I will wrap this up by saying, I have seldom seen a more sordid or unsavory attempt to pass off fecal matter as chocolate ice cream and expecting us to taste it, swallow it and enjoy it. It is offensive to anybody with any intelligence or decency. To try to boost Harry and Meghan by denying that their actions have led to their unpopularity is one thing, but to lay the ground for further attempts, which I have been told will follow, unless of course this is nipped in the bud, to further damage Prince William's reputation Prince William has never been accused of bullying staff. Prince William has never been accused of being a liar, of betraying his family, of betraying the interests of the royal family, of being a lazy, good-for-nothing bum who has only his own interests and those of his paramour at heart. He's never been accused of any of that. Yet he has been accused gratis, vicious statements at Soho House in Holland of requiring rose bushes to be planted in his garden. And since that story didn't stick, they're now going to be trying to say he'd prefer pansies as his favorite flower. 
This is outrageous. But it's cunning unless we blow the whistle on it, which it is my delight to do. You know, every now and then in life, when you are given information that you re realize is going to damage people if you don't do something about it, you are honor bound to stand up for what is true and fair and decent. I did it when, when Diana, Princess of Wales, was trying to destroy Prince Charles's reputation. And I wrote my Diana book, the first one. Notwithstanding the fact it could have very severely affected my way of life, detrimentally. I did it when I was told about the shenanigans surrounding the Queen's impending death, then her death, and I'm doing it again. You know, I am sure that fully 99% of the public has no idea of the fact that entities like Byline Times have a tremendous advantage over public figures. And I'm going to tell you what the advantage is. If you sue Byline Times, they are effectively an empty vessel. You have to pay your lawyers. All they need to do is go bankrupt, go bust, call in the administrators and they will destroy you financially. I had a publisher who tried that on for size with me. I pursued him for about 10 years. I never got the full amount, but I got some of the money back. But he simply pocketed my money and called in the administrators. If Dan Wooten or Christian Jones or Callum Stevens should decide that they wanted to sue Byline Times, not one of those three young men has sufficiently deep pockets. Byline Times not only has no money, it is funded by people with a great deal of money or it has sympathizers with a great deal of money and it has legal links to people with not only deep pockets but great legal expertise. So you the public will think oh Byline Times has said terrible things about Dan Wooten and Christian Jones and Callum Stevens. They, if they're really not guilty, they'll sue. They don't have the spare three or four hundred thousand pounds flying around to sue. Do you see the tremendous advantage that Byline Times has? It can be as irresponsible, as vicious, as nasty, as destructive, as conniving, as evil, evil as it wishes to be. No real consequence. It folds 
and two weeks later they open as another rag. That's the reality of what the victims of the sleazebag rags like Byline Times have to contend with. Don't believe a word of any of what you might read or hear about them. Or I should say from them. Believe everything you hear about them after you have investigated for yourself. But don't believe a word of what they say. They are the lowest of the low in my not so humble opinion. I know what the press are like. The Mirror Group just tried to run up my costs to damage me financially. That's right. They did it deliberately. I have a letter that I wrote to that sleazebag piece of scum called Alison Phillips, who is the head of the Mirror. And I told her that I had been told that she was going to be running up my costs, which she continued doing for another year and a half or two years. So the proof of the pudding was in the eating. And they are a pseudo reputable company with pockets. Ultimately, they realized they were going to lose so much money that they had to take the decision because they are accountable to a board of directors. So they ultimately decided to do the correct thing. Do you think an organization that has such little respect for the truth, decency, fair play and fact as Byline Times will for one nanosecond be concerned about anything except the maximum amount of damage they can do to others? Cogitate upon that and understand the vulnerability that any public figure who doesn't have a half a million pounds to waste on sleaze bags like byline times, the tremendous disadvantage they are at. The byline timeses of this world are not fit to exist. Don't believe a word they say. Why do I say that? Because I have investigated and discovered that, as I said earlier, they are not fit to be used as lavatory paper. And on that note, I will say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. If it has, please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what you would like us to speak about. Thank you so much. God bless. And if you have truly enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and take good care. Bye-bye.